Novak Djokovic, another year to remember in what has been one of the most illustrious careers in all of tennis. It started at the Australian Open with another title. Gets to Dubai and raises the trophy. How about Cincinnati, which wasn't necessarily in Cincinnati. Doesn't matter. Still a champion. And, of course, in Rome, just before Roland Garros, Novak rolling through the competition there as well and had a chance to talk about his mentality going into this tournament in Vienna. Opportunity to win new extra points uh, in, in the race for the ranking for to finish the year as number one this season, but also for that historic number one race. Of course, that was one of the big reasons why, why I came to Vienna. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to obviously win as many matches as possible. I know I need a couple of matches to, to, to end up as, you know, number one of the, of the world in this season. And, and hopefully I'll be able to do that. You know, I, I, that's, that's definitely one of the, one of the big goals. Just a couple of wins away from another year-end number one. No Eagle, Paul Anacone. Kamal Murray, look at this. He's with us. Judge, yes. Put us to shame, Mark. It's unbelievable. Well, you weren't here last week, but he did it twice Again. already. Yeah. yeah, so it's just consistent at this point. Kamal. Time, time I love help. it. Time I love it. Help. No, no, no. He, see, he's modest, too. This is what's so great about him. The rave reviews from Kamal Murray, all well-deserved. But listen, Novak Djokovic, two wins away, Paul, from being the, the year-end number one now. Once again, he's now had 292 weeks at that spot. All he has to do is beat Filip Krajinovic and now Borna Cioric to do it. And listen, we talk about all the superlatives of Novak Djokovic and what he's done in his career. Uh, but this is another accomplishment, another thing that he can list as, I did this and nobody else has. Yeah, I mean, he, he's looking for records. The more records he gets, the happier he's going to be. And he's playing for history now. He realizes that. He does have to win two matches this week. That's tough. But what great players do, they worry about the first match first, right? So you know he's going to be ready. He talked about it's about a accumulating points the way the rankings work. Last year, he won Paris indoors. So that gets to stay on this year because of the way things work. So he doesn't need to play that again, but he'll play this and potentially earn 500 more. So he knows what he's doing, playing for history, um, and he's fun to watch. Not as fun to watch as that suit right there, but he's <laughs> fun to watch. <laughs> it's been an impressive run, Kamal, but uh, Novak Djokovic, again, two more wins. He can end as the year-end number one once again. What an incredible accomplishment for this guy. It's interesting the way he approaches it. A lot of people approach the game a lot more micro. Nadal just talks about he wants to show up and play well and give it his best effort. And Novak monitors not only what he does in individual matches, but the year in total. It's interesting you ask a player, would you take a grand slam or world number one? And every year, Novak says, I'll take both. <laughs> that, that, that's why he is the way he is. That's pretty good luxury to have, right? And look, if he does do it and get, which is very likely because only needs his two wins to get to that year end, he would tie Pete Sampras, Paul. And I know you were there for, for much of those six years that he ended his career at number one in the world. It would be six years now that Novak Djokovic would end the year at number one. And he said that he grew up idolizing Pete. So to just do that, let alone, sure, it's tying an all-time record, but just to do it next to the name Pete Sampras really meant a lot. It did. And look, it's about longevity. And, and Novak is a five-time five -time champion. You know, it's interesting. Pete told me that his greatest accomplishment was being ranked year-end number one six times wow. in a row. Right. Right? Because you only have one time to do that, basically, in your career. So he still has that record, although Rafa, Roger, and Novak win everything else. He's got the six years in a row, so he's happy about that. <laughs> but for Novak to do that six years period is incredible. And look, we talked about it. Novak's playing for history. That's what he wants to do. I'm curious, and Kamau, I think that you'd have a really good perspective on this from the coaching perspective. When you have a player, because you mentioned, every player kind of thinks differently. And Novak is somebody who is motivated by, I want these records. I want to say I've done this. I want to say I've done this. Rafa Nadal may be somebody who just needs to get into a tournament and start playing. How do you handle that as a coach? How do you make sure that you're catering to your player? You know, I think it's tricky because when you start to think too macro, sometimes you, uh, you start to look ahead. You see Denis Shapovalov here obviously playing for a little bit more than his opponent was today, trying to get to the year in finals. And sometimes it can kind of get you out of your rhythm and you start looking past the match and you end up and you have a, a tricky loss like Shapovalov did today. So I like to continue just to so every match, focus on the tactics, make it out of today, then we focus on tomorrow because you get ahead of yourself and you can end up first round loser. Look, this is, a, we mentioned the six weeks, or six years rather, at number one at the end of the year, but this is a couple now months away, and this is another likely record to be broken, Paul. Novak Djokovic currently at 292 total weeks as world number one. He can pass Roger Federer by the 
middle-ish of March, March 8th to be exact, if he continues on the current trajectory that he's on. Yeah, and look, we keep harping on it, but he wants records, and he is in the era of Rafa and Roger, and I think that in some ways that's a shame because Novak has been the best player for the last decade. If you look at the results purely, he's been the most accomplished of the three, so he's trying to knock down that door, just scooted past Pete, uh, he's well past Rafa and closing in on Roger. There's some more tennis ahead, but, you know, it's really interesting because I love to hear what Kamal had to say about balancing the macro and the micro because a lot of it does depend on the player. And I think Novak's one of these few people that's able to use both and monitor him so he can stay in the moment but understand history. And uh, it's fun to watch that when you get to see it. You get to see all times great, and that's what we, all time greats, and that's what we're enjoying. Yeah, talk about an accomplishment, Kamal. This would be really incredible for Novak Djokovic. Yeah, and it's bittersweet because we hate to see, especially Paul. We hate to see <laughs> records being taken away from people like P. Sampras, one of the all time gentle giants in the game. But it's really good to see the game continuing to move forward and see Novak Djokovic, who is the next generation after Pete, to continue to just push. Uh, to push the game forward and set an example for the other young guys like Zverev and team who are coming up behind him.